John was just an easygoing introvert, I would say. He would come into the room and like wouldn't say a word. So he was like that easy go, like nothing bothered him. As life comes, just take it as it comes. Like if I was stressing about something, he would say, oh, you have fun stressing about it. I'm gonna just keep living life. You could tell that he genuinely cared about other people before himself. So the accident happened um, March 17, 2017. It was two miles from our home on Old Stage. And John and his buddy after work went downtown to get sushi. Then he called me and he was sending me these pictures of this big fire downtown. And I, I was like, wow, that's crazy. And he said, we're gonna go try to help. And he was just like sending me stuff. And I just kind of said, you know, take care. Don't, you know, be safe. And then I went to bed because it was getting late. And the next thing I know is I got a call that my husband was unresponsive. The lady said it was an automobile accident. And then at that point, they didn't think he was gonna make it. After the accident, his condition was not good. It was no response. We, first off, they could not fully scan his brain until the pressure in his brain went down that they could get him into an MRI. He couldn't lay flat at that point. I think it was about a weekend that we were able to get an MRI and at that point, he was not responsive. So there's a Glasgow scale, three being the lowest, I think it's like 15 or 16, the highest he was at a three. I mean, meaning no response at all. We weren't sure the extent of the damage because he wasn't able to communicate. And we soon learned that he had global aphasia at that point, meaning that he couldn't express himself, he couldn't understand language, he couldn't orient. I mean, like he was, so there was no way to know what was really going on inside of him. Then the inability to communicate just brought frustration and his agitation just went over the top. And with the agitation came that he would physically not participate. So he was not physically or cognitively participating in any therapy for almost two years post-accident. Now all the rehab facilities did not believe I could bring him home. They just, I mean, we fought back and forth. So that was a big, big um, challenge to get him home. And it was this whole thing of everybody was putting fear in me, like you can't handle him or he's gonna fall and get worse or, you know, he's just gonna be back in, back in rehab or, you know, all these different fear things. I was like, no, but I've got this. On a physical and emotional level, it was the darkest time in my life. I knew at that point something was misfiring in his brain. His brain was not getting the right stimulation to heal. I kept saying to everyone, if we heal his brain, if we give his brain the right things, I know without a doubt this boy will fight through it. So when the accident happened, I had many people in the service say, you need to get him into hyperbaric. And I was all about it. So I asked all the doctors and they're like, oh, there's not enough research. It's not, his condition's too bad. And I just didn't feel like I was right. And I kept on asking each doctor after and I got the same answer and same answer. And actually an organization reached out to me, um, America's Almighty Warriors, contacted me and said, she was following the story and she said, you know, I'm, I want to provide this service for John. And so we kind of were researching everywhere we went. And so I just kept on asking each doctor and I kept getting the same answer. But when I got him home, I was like, okay, hyperbaric, here we come. And Debbie Lee was so amazing. She just had patience and she just waited until the time was right. But I feel like the puzzle pieces had to come together and God guided us to the place that we had a, a functional neurologist, Dr. Daigle came into the picture. And one day I said, you know, I had this organization that'll pay for hyperbaric. What are your thoughts? He's like, absolutely, let's do this. And I was like, done. So I contacted Debbie Lee, I get chills, because it was like, finally, 
when we got the okay from the doctor that we could get John into hyperbaric, we started Googling in the Raleigh area and we found Ex Vivita. And I gave, I sent the contact to her and she reached out to them and it just kind of fell into place right then and there. Once we started hyperbaric, I think on all aspects and all levels, John just started healing. I believe that the oxygen that he was receiving was going to the areas that were really painful and helping heal that area. It's like his body started easing and it's like he started feeling more like himself and he wanted to be up in his chair and he didn't want to be in his bed anymore. And that to me is huge. You can just see it in his face, his whole like demeanor and his whole emotional state has come back. It's like he went from fear to joy. Before he was, you know, in so much pain to now he's peaceful. All day we're always incorporating some way for him to have more independence. But in physical therapy, now we're working on standing and walking. And I believe by the end of the year, he'll be walking with a walker by himself. I mean, that wasn't even in sight before we started Hyperbaric. From before we started Hyperbaric to now is black or white. Like, it's two different, two different phases of, life, of his healing. Before, it was dark, and now we're in light. Like, it's seriously, there's hope, there's everyday's healing. So, I knew that he was in pain. I knew that he wanted relief. And now I know that he has relief. I know that he isn't in pain and he wants to heal. John has improved on every level the doctor said he would never improve one. His ability to express himself, his ability to speak, um, his ability to move his whole left side. I mean, we were told that just might never work again. Like his ability to even walk and one foot, the motor planning of one foot and the other foot, we were told that left foot would never motor plan. I look at him and it's like, he, as people say, he's like, you would look at him, he looks like himself before. And it's just amazing how much healing the body can actually do. Also, doctor said, because we had agitation for so long that the agitation would most likely be lifelong. That there was no way that we would get over that. But I knew, because God was giving me the insight that this was gonna end, that there was an end to this and there was a light. There was a reason that we were going through it all. Um, so it, every time we go to like a doctor now and they see that he's not agitated whatsoever, they're like, that's not even heard of. Honestly, nothing bothers him now. It's, it's unheard of. Like no doctors would ever think that would be possible. This is how he was before the accident. His personality came back through. He was someone, like we said, he was someone that was just carefree, easygoing, nothing much bothered him, and now he's like that again. My name is Jonathan Neil Grant. Today is August 23rd, 2019. My favorite is yellow. I love you. Thank you. I am Navy SEAL, SEAL Team 7. My dog name is Kaya. My favorite food is pizza. My brother's name Seth David Nathan Van.